There, there's no doubt the ability to use the all clubs from two perspectives. One, building the skill, so being able to have multiple solutions to the same problem uh, helps. And then actually just the proximity to the hole. If there's certain shots where if you used a bump and run seven iron, nine iron, five iron, over time with practice, uh, the ability to do that um, will produce better results. So it's twofold, there's no doubt about that. But I found then, sometimes it creates problems, right? Like, sometimes if we train all clubs enough, you take a kid who just uses one club, gets pretty good at that one club, but not great, like there's room for improvement. And then we, in practice, show that their um, proximity to the hole is better with multiple clubs. But the problem then is that they have too many uh, choices, right? So you go onto a course and there's a shot where I could do either one, and then they don't know what to do. And sometimes that uncertainty that pops up when they don't know what to do um, eliminates the benefit of the proximity to the hole. So even though they're able to chip that seven iron closer, because they're not certain of the club, no matter which one they choose, they get a bad outcome. So it's been interesting to watch that and learn. And for myself, as I teach people, it's very straightforward that their shots are better here, but then in a tournament, you know, three holes to go and you have a chip shot and you could use either one, your brain's never hit a seven iron there before, doesn't know what to do with it. You're in between two clubs, you 50%, you uncertainly pick one club and then bad result. And then I link a bad result to using a seven iron uh, for that shot. So it's not as black and white as I wish it was of like, just do this or just do this. There's just so many variables involved with it. But um, the long-term benefit of using multiple clubs, I think, outweighs a potential short-term negative of change. Like from here to there, mm -hmm. or shorter, can you use like a pitching wedge or nine iron? Mm. Or you haven't been doing that or you don't want to or what? I sometimes use the pitching wedge, but the pitching wedge is if I want it to roll. I just, I just choo, want to roll into far through distance. And from the shorter distances, are you having short distances where you, you can't make the ball roll? Like you don't have enough green to work with or what? Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Like, like if I were like, like right here. I would hope if you were here in reality, you'd putt. Yeah, would, that's I'd, not the, <laughs> No, no, just, just no. I can't, I'm really bad at putting off the fringe. What's like, that? I don't know, it, it's just something mental in my head. It's, and if I were to go out on a course, I'd always, I'd always chip it from the fringe. That's a hard no. Yeah, that's a hard no. No, I'm saying like, I will not allow that. Oh, you won't allow that? Well, I, I will put off the fringe sometimes. Let's rephrase Some... that. You will from here on forward put off the fringe every single time. Say that with me. I will here on out put from the fringe every single yep. time. And I don't care what you think or anyone else says, you will putt from the fringe every single time, period. All right. Done deal? Done deal. Okay, so if you have this scenario from here, you are, mm -hmm. your putts will be closer to the hole than your chip shots. Well, if they aren't now, they're gonna depending be. Depending on where it is on the fringe. Okay. Because if I have a yard onto the green, then I won't putt it. Because okay. there's too much stuff there and it will knock the ball around. Okay. If I were here, now that's a different story. If you're here, you're putting. So let's start with your putter first. Okay, so if we were hitting this, downhill right to left, yeah? Yeah. And this is all feel. And I don't buy that you can't get your putter within a reasonable distance here. I should be aware when you're doing practice strokes. Okay, start again. What's up with the feet so far apart? Straight, straight or club face. No, false. Yeah, straight club path. Feet farther apart would make you swing a straighter club path? Yeah. De give me details, why would that happen? Hideki Amatsuyama. No, it's false. So can we put our feet normal, please? Okay, good. Eyes up. Okay, so that was like an okay putt, nothing special, and it was two feet. Right. Now, that would have to be a pretty good chip shot for you to hit it there. That's the whole point. Now, let's go seven iron. Okay, so seven iron from here to there is essentially like a putt, right? Just with that club in your hand. Eyes up still when you're doing your swings. Okay, 
So this would be, that would be my option number two. Because I would say that was a kind of a bad shot with a seven iron, but would be okay with the sand wedge. Now let's go sand wedge here. This would be last option. Cool. Because that to me was a very good shot with a sand wedge. And it's inside the seven iron, but it's outside the putt. Alright. Yeah. Now let's go putter again, please. And you are not a bad putter from the fringe. I've seen you putt for months at a time. You need to get that out of your head. Okay, seven iron. Now, are you using that all in your plan? Seven iron? Yeah. No. Why not? Because I prefer the sand wedge and the pitching wedge. Don't change that. Okay. Now let's go get those. We're gonna bring them down and fry. In fact, you get your stuff. I'll get these. Let's start with let's start with this left ball. So you have three club options. You could go sand wedge, putter, or seven iron. Seven iron. Okay. I'll take the other one. Where's the sand wedge? Sand wedge. Okay, glad Came you off. did that because it was dumb. Club selection. What do you mean dumb? dumb? I came up underneath that. No, it was just bad club selection. Hit your seven iron. This is not a sand wedge shot. I'm going to give you an easy decision making solution for all this in a minute. You're going to tell me what club? <laughs> I'm going to show you how to pick them when you go play. So very clearly that was easier for you to do. Ball finished closer to the hole, mm -hmm. smaller swing. I feel like I don't need to make a big argument for that. No, you don't. Okay. So let's say we're here. What club do you think? Oh, it's seven iron. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Seven iron's good. I hate this. Okay. I hate this so much. Yes, that was a good miss. So on this one, I'm thinking seven iron. Seven iron. I'm okay. not. I'm not going with the putter yeah, from yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay, so let's say you had a big slope like that. Yeah? All else different, what would you do? I would get feet closer together. Okay? I would get closer to the ball. I'd lean into the hill with your feet. Okay? So I'd start with that first. Don't lean back with your shoulder, just go neutral. Okay. Good. Okay. So we have one here. And as we look at it, we're thinking seven iron again. <laughs> oh, Molly. Incredible. You! You are thinking seven Incredible. iron. Incredible. <laughs> you can hit seven from all these spots. It really is. Matthew Palmer coming in hot. Thank you. That was a miss hit. And still not bad. You need to start chipping with that club, my friend. Mm. Now, here's going to be your deal. How do you know when to do it or not do it? Ready? I'm going to make it very simple. Take decisions out of your hands. I'm going to say, where well, you're going to go out and you're going to look at how much fringe compared to green you have. Got it? Less Ooh, grass to cover. Less fringe, more green, seven iron. Or bump more and run of some, for, of some sort. Not until you get to the point where it's 50-50 or more should you be going sand wedge. Yeah. So, like, right here. Now, I don't want you to literally walk these off all the time, but just, like, gauge them. But if I were, right here, hang on, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paces to the front edge. So we've eight grass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve paces to here, right? So we have more green than grass, but not by a lot. So you could use seven iron, but that could also be like a pitching wedge from there. Yeah? Right. Grab your pitching wedge out. 
screw that too far a little bit. Not bad. So do you get the idea here, bud? Mm -hmm. So like when you have more green than area to cover, bump and run. Bump and run. Determine if it's a seven iron bump and run or like this, right. which goes to pitching wedge. If you get back to where it's the other way and you have more green than fringe, then you hit the sandwich shot. Right. So if you're here, let's say you're over here. Drop a ball right here. So let's say you're right there. Now you have what? More green or more? What do you got? More green. Okay, so. But rough. But rough. So this is probably like a pitching wedge nine iron. What club do you have? Sand wedge? Maybe. But wait a minute, I thought if there's more green. Yeah. Okay. I'm going with the pitching wedge. Okay. Yeah, then we don't need to hit. Then we don't need to hit a. What's it called? Go ahead. Cool. Then well, you just have to hit it. That's all. Bring it back. I want to make this decision making process easier for you so you're not having to second guess yourself. You with me on this? Mm hmm. Cool. Because I'd much rather you play a shot like that that's going to hit out and roll. Okay, then. Then your sandwich is not going to roll a bunch. Right. Even if you're playing some faster greens. Now, if you're like over here, right? Come over here. If you're like over here, like let's say you're back here. And you're like this. Mm -hmm. And there's more green than this, but like you're playing tight, fast fairways, they're going to roll a lot. Yeah. Then now from here, you use a sandwich. Right. You with me on that? Yes. But if you have more green, then you use a bump and mm -hmm. run. Determine whether it's like nine iron pitching or seven iron. With me? Yes.